Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to illustrate an application of Fourier series to differential equations. And this is the differential equation we'll be looking at subject to some initial conditions. Note that it's second order, it's linear, and you can think of this differential equation as modelling the displacement x at time t of a spring mass system. The 50 here would represent the spring constant divided by the mass and the f of t would represent an external forcing function given by this and we're also told the forcing function is periodic with period 2 pi. Now the initial conditions may be interpreted as the system starting from rest with zero displacement. Now we're given a hint, we're told that the Fourier sine series of this external forcing function is this series here. Now in fact I've actually calculated the Fourier sine series of this function in another video so if you want the details there you can look it up. But what we're going to do is use this information to solve this differential equation. Now I'm going to break it down into a number of parts and um, the first idea is that this is linear so we know that a solution, so let's call this uh, star A solution x is of the form x equals x sub h plus x sub p. Now x sub h is a solution to the homogeneous version of star, so you replace f of t with zero, and x sub p is a particular solution to star that we construct. Now x sub h is quite easy to um, formulate, x sub p takes a bit more work. So let's do that. So for x sub h we solve the corresponding homogeneous equation related to star. So we replace the right hand side with zero. Now you would have seen this in first year. Basically you look at the characteristic equation associated with this which is just a uh, quadratic in this case it's lambda squared plus 50 equals 0. Now this has roots positive and negative root 50i Now I could write 5 root 5 here if I really want to do, but I'm not going to do that. But the important thing here is that these are complex valued roots. And because they're complex, our x sub h has the following form. It involves cosines and sines. Okay, so that's the relatively easy part of this question, calculating the homogeneous, or the solution to the homogeneous problem. The more involved part is the particular solution. So let's have a look at that. Now... Now we need to assume this particular solution has a certain form and if we look back to our original start equation f of t has this form and we know that the Fourier series will converge to this um, f of t so I can actually re replace little f of t with this Fourier series so what I'm going to do is assume that our particular solution has 
this kind of form, just with a different um, coefficient here. So let me show you how I do that. So it's going to be a series that is similar, but just with a different coefficient. So you can see in here there's 2k minus 1, 2k minus 1, so I'm going to keep that with the subscript and here also. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to differentiate once, twice, and sub this and its derivatives into my original start equation. That way I can calculate this coefficient because once I have this coefficient I get the whole particular solution. Now I'm going to make a big assumption here. I'm going to assume that I can just differentiate this and everything will be well defined. Now that the details of that is for another video but at the moment I'm just going to assume it and differentiate. So if I differentiate term by term with respect to t, I'll get something like the following. Okay, so this is going to come to the front, sine will go to cosine, and I'll get the following. So again, if I differentiate, cos will go to negative sign and this will come out here. So I'm just going to write it this way now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is sub this and this back into my start equation and write f in this manner. So then what I can do is equate the coefficients and find this c sub 2k minus 1. Okay, so it's going to get a bit messy now, but I'll get something like the following. So the first term, x double dash, will be this. The next term, which is 50x, will be this. And the right hand side, which is little f, is going to be written in terms of its Fourier series. So this comes from the hint. Okay, so this looks really messy now, but I can actually simplify everything and get rid of the summation signs and so what I'm going to be left with is, so essentially I'll take a common factor of um, this here and I can cross off the summation signs and get the following. So on the right hand side I'm just going to be left with this. So what I can do now is rearrange, just bring this down to the other side, and I'll get what I'm looking for, my coefficient c sub 2k minus 1.
Okay, so once I've found this, I can put this back into here and I've got my particular solution. It's quite messy, but it's what we're looking for. So now we've got our homogeneous solution, we've got our particular solution, let's put them together. So the general solution to our ODE is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution which is the following. Now, the A and the B here in my homogeneous solution, they're just constants, and we'll determine them in a minute. They're determined from the initial conditions. Okay, so this is our, our general solution here. Okay, so we haven't yet used our initial conditions. I, I mentioned that the spring mass system, it started from rest and it had zero displacement. So let's use this initial conditions to calculate A and B. So the initial conditions, the ICs. So the first initial condition is x of 0 equals 0. Zero displacement when t equals 0. Now if I go up here and substitute in t equals 0, well this will be a, this will be 0, and this is 0. So basically I have a equals 0. So this term will actually disappear, and I'm left with only signs in my answer. So let's see if we can determine B. Well, B is a little bit trickier. We use the other initial condition, which was zero velocity. So what you do is you go here, forget about that term, differentiate term by term. Again, that's a big assumption. Differentiate with respect to T and then substitute in t equals 0. So if I do that, I'll get something like the following. Okay, so this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1, and if I, I can then just rearrange the equation to get B. B is going to be the following. Okay, so we're almost finished the question now. 
the last thing we have to do is just put everything together. So, our particular well, I guess our particular solution to the initial value problem is the following. Okay, so So this is B sine root 50t. And then the particular solution was given by this. That's the final answer. Now, of course, it's very messy. So what I've done is actually plotted this in terms of maple. And you can see that here's the, okay, I'm not sure if I can fit it on, but here's the graph of the solution. You can see there's oscillation here and um, it, it looks, at least from the graph, that this um, external forcing function just keeps the mass, the spring mass system vibrating.